Hello! At popular request, I'm back with another Educational Ranked. Where we play 1v1 Ranked and I talk about different processes that happen during a 1v1 competitive game in the Planetary Annihilation. In this edition, I'll focus on strategical thinking in terms of positioning, Jesus. movement, where to expand to, and what's of importance. So in this process, I've never seen this map before, by the way, it's a new season and so on. In this process, you look around the map to recognize what positions you ought to hold and what positions you ought to push and defend and so on. Reconnaissance is important in this endeavor, but also metal placement and geographical um, location in terms of CSG, in terms of proximity to opponent space and so on. So we spawn here, we spawn, opponent spawn here. Never seen this map before, so this is a new season. This is the closest path, which therefore is of interest. But one thing, thing to recognize is the lack of metal in this area, whereas we see metal heavy backside down here. So I'm thinking, in this game, I will implement the commander walk that I've been known for for the past month, ever since I did it in the uh, PA community tournament or championship series, I mean, it's called a while back, where you essentially build more fabrics in the early game than you usually would do to walk your commander. And I will do it down this line as it's lots of metal, important area to control the commander, and I'll expand opposite here with the fabrics to grab metal. That way we control the two most metal rich areas and then we act from there. We will control the eco and uh, we'll have an opportunity to push the base from both sides from here and from here with proxies. So that will be our plan so we will spawn here and then we can either do a vehicle into bot. If you want me to do a further explanation of the process of doing a comwalk build please let me tell and I'll do that in another video maybe a PA Academy video or so on. For now, we're going to focus on the strategical planning. So first, we open a vehicle fa factory. And the idea here is to get five fabrics kind of early on. we got to make sure we're defended against fabric snipes early on too. So that's a big focus of the early game. Picture in picture on the base. We want to make sure this is not being uh, crushed in any way, shape or form. While we're elsewhere, focusing elsewhere. So that way we can easily have a look to see how it's doing. Oh, oh. Just commander being a little bit silly here. So what we're doing, we're just... This is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But we're just assisting out fa fabers and building this energy in between. Uh, to get up or build power quick enough. We can move on to more important things. This striker is important to... Make sure you're not boom but snipe it. Sniped. It's still a real a real possibility for sure, but it negate that to some extent for sure. And here out of this first bot factory we're gonna get sparks predom predominantly. And here these new fabrics, their main focus is to build in the base with the commander essentially. So off we go. Gonna bring with us the anti anti air, so we're defended against uh, bomb attempts, and then this is what will continue to build our base while our commander expands. So just queue up a lot of energy in the base, and we'll be on our way. So here you see. These fabbers grabbing this area, this commander is going to grab this, this area. And they try to go for the bomb snipe. A little bit of a lag, but I'll be alright. And as you see, our economy is in balance. And the map is starting to get under our control. Radar, important for information. We see they've gone air. For that reason, I think it's time to invest in a entire area in the base so that we don't get surprised by it let's say and this factory is going to focus on grabbing this area 
Four mechs just raced up. Important area to keep. We see Eco. We were floating slightly, so that it was the time to to build another factory. As these guys are finishing up too. And they're gonna continue on further down. So in the interest of further escalation, strikers, while being a fast unit, we're not gonna have much use for it right now. We're gonna go over to Drifters and Infernos, as they will work very well with their sparks. And have a keen interest in what we find over here, so we're gonna have to go and look. Okay, we see expansion over here, and it's by Airfabers. Should be easily contested. But well, this commander should not be doing idle work, like is the case at the moment. Ooh, fancy. He actually got the sniper. Nice job. We will try to get the air scout. Important indeed. And we see he has units present over there. That is something we should focus on negating. We see a fair amount of air at the moment. So we will assist the air factory with some more troops. And now we need to scout around the map to see where he is focusing. We see here the army pushing the main base. So we will refocus our efforts to the base. It's important that we don't lose the base as that's where we find a lot of the energy. And we see we're successfully killing a lot of his eco. And by this point he's really trailing because we're controlling the important areas of here, of here, and of here. And there is simply not enough eco for him to have around the map at this stage. That's a bad trade, but hey, it is what it is. He's heavily into Grenadiers, which is well countered by our compositions. This is the stage where you got to make sure you counter whatever your opponent is doing. Air is less of a issue at the moment, so we will move our focus over to energy feather. Since entire is such an effective tool at dealing with bombers. You don't need too much air really if you don't need to, if you don't want to. This is rather a ground heavy build focused on ground presence and ground raiding and so on. You will have to do with what you can in terms of sniping bombers, killing bombers and so on. And now you see we're make we're doing some uh, progress on the base. We're putting in some damage. And at this point, it's over. We just gotta make sure our commander stays alive. He's doing rather well, if I may say so myself. With Drifter Heavy Builds, it's important to bring skitters. At this point, he is surrounded. And there's no way he can actually approach on our base. So picture in picture is now being moved over to his base, as that's where the action is happening. At this stage, you probably want to be careful with the commander. With my experience, I decide not to. Because I have faith that in the case of a threat, I will be able to see it in time and act accordingly. You might not be all that confident in that ability. So you might want to retreat with him. As you see, our eco is doing very fine indeed. It's doing very fine indeed.
you are going to have to make sure your opponent isn't going tier 2. And that's taking you by surprise. If that's the case, you either need to go tier 2 yourself or punish his tier 2. That is your two options. One way to do that would be to have a drifter's counter tier 2. Um, tier 2 bots in particular. If it's tier 2 vehicle, you would have to overwhelm it. Then probably more with sparks and grenadiers and whatnot. So now we're just closing up the game, making sure everything is fine here. And we'll be on our way. And you can see how by controlling the central expansions, with deliberate planning early game, we're choking our opponent economically. And therefore carrying ourselves to victory. In this game in particular, I didn't meet too much resistance in my attempts to control the essential points. That might be different when you play, in which case you have to fight over it. And in any case, make sure your commander is safe, but don't don't be scared. Your commander is, has a resource. We have energy, we have metal. It's a uh, important defining resources but there's also the commander health being equally important early game if you can trade out with units this health you will be in a very fine situation to do critical damage that he cannot recover from so don't be scared to get him in there don't be scared to get some experience with your commander out in the field. Don't be scared. Don't mind some losses. It isn't all that important. We're not looking for individual victories. We're looking for progress over time, essentially. So, if you're unsuccessful in Im implementing this strategies and so on in the future, and that leads to loss over opponents you don't necessarily would assumed to lose against but it's not really an issue all our losses we take into the review and we analyze and we see how they beat us was it in production in factories was it in army count as a result of factories and eco was it in the eco tab or was it in positioning or was it in tactical decisions such as what units to build and to tech up and whatnot and with that we say GG, well played to our opponent, and we have a look. So as discussed ahead of the game, while expanding to one side, supported by units, this is probably not necessary, you might want these strikers to, to follow these fabrics instead, but it was sufficient for this situation. In this situation, grabbing Mexes and building proxies down this important area with the fabrics down this area with the commander and therefore controlling the map controlling the metal and there were no way for our opponent to challenge our supremacy in the economics so i hope you found this helpful and that you're able to learn from it and implement this way of strategical thinking of what areas to take control over it, what metal to expand to first. As you see, you might want to skip some metal that's closer on because of walking time. Walking time is an important part of the game that is not to be underestimated. So with that, I wish you good luck with your efforts. And if you want to see more educational ranks or if you want to see the Comwalk build further explained in detail, then please leave a comment and tell me to do so. Otherwise, I'll see you around.